Welcome to the Author Reading Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Scott. And I'm Aaron. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Uh, as always, we're, we're socially distanced. It's the only way we can record the show. Uh, I'm in Kansas City. Ross is still in the Northeast in Connecticut. And Scott and Aaron are both in Arkansas. Are you guys at least like near each other in Arkansas? No. Uh, no. <laughs> we're Aaron, a few hours, we're yeah, a few hours Aaron, away. Aaron's in central Arkansas, and I'm in uh, the northwest Arkansas, uh, Fayetteville, Bentonville, Rogers, that area of the state. So that's my, um, so that was my, uh, <laughs> when the pandemic started, we had a Colorado trip. And so, like, we killed that, and we we're like, where can we go? And we went to a cabin at Beaver instead because we were like, We'll stay in the cabin by ourselves. We won't do anything. We won't talk to anybody. That's pretty much what we did. I know yeah, almost it, nothing about Arkansas. Yeah, I, well, I didn't grow up in Arkansas. I grew up, my dad was in the military. I was actually born in Iceland. Okay. And grew up mostly on the East Coast in, uh, in North Carolina. And then the uh, my, my mom was born and raised in Northwest Arkansas. Okay. Um, my only interaction with the state growing up was like coming to visit grandparents. And so, uh, had no plans of, of living, <laughs> ended, up, ended up getting out of school and uh, worked for a while on the East coast, actually in San Diego. And then, uh, a, a job with an investment banking firm brought me back to Arkansas and then with Walmart and, uh, <laughs> met a girl from Arkansas so, stayed here. So crazy surprise, story. surprise. Walmart <laughs> in Arkansas? Place. I'm so confused. But yeah, no. it's a hidden, hidden, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. Um, tonight when we start talking about some of the express rally stuff but you know especially uh like the northwest portion of the state is i mean it's it's absolutely crazy here it's the world headquarters of walmart jb yeah. hunt tyson some fortune uh really some fortune 100 companies um and uh you know it's kind of an undiscovered gem both for art and culture and then also for off-roading and, and things so We'll get into it later, but yeah, that's my spiel on Arkansas. For those of you that have already tuned out because you don't want to hear a hillbilly talk about all my DIY projects, One, ding, 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 ding. Two, I don't DIY anything. Uh, and three, the state might actually surprise you if you decide to come out and give it a visit. So, I mean, yeah, I'm done. That's true. I'm scrolling around on Google Street View right now, and it, it looks absolutely beautiful. And I honestly, in all transparency, never would have suspected that we got to get North you guys out here for an ozark event yeah um, northwest arkansas oh, yeah. is where it's at like you don't don't go to the capital city where i'm at <laughs> go, go to northwest arkansas at least you're closer to the ozarks um and that's all like where all the cool shit is because there's yeah. nothing to do in central arkansas all the cool stuff's in northwest arkansas because that's where our major university is yeah I have, I have family in springfield missouri so like we we yeah. We dip down into the good parts that we like. The good parts is how yeah. we refer to it. <laughs> the good parts. And then we get back up. <laughs> what we need to make happen is the two of you to fly out here. Um, uh, I have an extra vehicle you can use on one of the events, and that way you can experience firsthand the Ozarks. We'll talk so, about that later, but we're going we're, we're gonna to make it happen. You guys I might just can, drive can, to you, fly, flying from Kansas City down there. <laughs> that's, that seems very bougie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> That's how Scott scared. rolls, though, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I need to hop on a plane for my thirty-seven minute flight. <laughs> right. Well, I'll fly. I'll, I, my Ross flight's long dead. enough for both of us, so yeah, it's fine. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna hop uh, to the news. The news. Gonna, oh my gosh, Ross, you're gonna love my segue. We're gonna we're gonna hop. Ready? Are you ready? I yes. forgot to warn Scott and Aaron again that I share photos, so I don't have to go back and edit them into the show. <laughs> we're gonna hop we're hopping so, it it's so, bronco for, raptor bronco raptor for the listeners the hop joke means that the bronco raptor is in the air yeah the picture's in the air yeah. driven by <laughs> shelby hall uh so yeah so bronco raptor after what we've been seeing pictures of this thing on the streets for six or eight months now forever and yeah now it's here and it's uh it's mostly what we expected but there's a few changes and diversions that we didn't really expect so I mean, the first and most clear thing here is that it's enormous. It's 9.8 <laughs> inches wider than a standard Bronco. Can you get, say that number again? Because I think I laughed 9. over you. 9.8. So it's eight, 10 inches wider. Yeah, 8.6 <laughs> of which is made up by the axles. So oh my it's gosh. Uh, upgraded Dana 40 at the front, upgraded to a Dana 50 at the rear. And it's got half shafts that they developed for the Bronco DR race rig, 
which mm. means hopefully Stout. none of the IFS fuckery that happens with <laughs> high power, you know, <laughs> IFS rigs on 37s. Um, so those are, you know, that's the 8.6 that makes up the majority of the width. And then they put those crazy box flares on that make it 9.8 inches wider. Um, that's, you know, that's the most apparent thing for everybody who doesn't know anything about what's happening underneath. Uh, different engine is another headline. So a lot of people expected the 3.5 twin turbo EcoBoost from the F-150 Raptor. And they actually did the 3.0. So it's 400 horsepower instead of 450. And speculation is obviously that they did this so that they can then just put the five liter or the supercharged Voodoo engine in. Not Voodoo. What's the GT500 engine? Is it a Voodoo engine? I'm spacing it. Sure. But yeah, so the speculation is that they did the three liter so that the super big dog is, you know, the V8. And that comes later for what will probably be $90,000 because the Bronco Raptor starts at 70. So those Which are the, a little lower than what I thought it was. I thought same. I was speculating close to 75, just to keep it in line with 392 Wrangler. But, you know, we're also looking at 70 horsepower less than the Wrangler. Um, they also talked a lot about the other changes that have been made. So it's got Fox live valve suspension, which is, absolutely wild and uh we see it a lot in the side-by-sides you know in the utv world and it, it monitors it's as close as you can get to fully predictive suspension that like reads the road in front of you it, it can change things like within uh like one every every thousand milliseconds or something uh, that number is probably wrong i'm, I'm misquoting but it, it's amazing amazing suspension technology um, and they also did a ton of extra bracing. I don't know if anybody saw the pictures, but they literally just took like huge carbon fiber, like strut tower mounts and bolted it to the roll cage at the back. So they said, uh, torsional rigidity is up 60%. Now I have a mission to find strut towers, which also <laughs> it 60% makes me kind of in the back of my head go, so what, what was it before? Right. <laughs> but the, you know those are those are the headlines it, it looks fucking crazy see um, what's funny though is we saw we saw camouflage pictures that you always see with cars earlier mm -hmm. yep. uh, on vehicles like this because it's like you can tell <laughs> you're not hiding much you you know you have the ability to kind of hide some of the little minute fine fine details and stuff like that but I think it looks pretty much like everyone thought it would look. 37-inch tires from the factory is pretty rad. The other thing that's interesting that I saw today was that it doesn't actually fit on the current Bronco production line, so I think they were having to do some refueling. <laughs> I didn't see that. That's a step. Line. Um, you know, like widening the track on what on which it travels through the plant? Probably. Yeah, I, think it had to do I, don't rem I don't recall exactly, but I remember seeing that somewhere today, so I thought that was I thought that was interesting. Uh, we actually have a guy uh, in our Express Rally group um, that just purchased a like a first edition Bronco mm -hmm. earlier this week, uh, and I had lunch with him. And I just it's a big vehicle. I mean, but they they look That's awesome. Fun. I'm not a not a Ford guy, but I I love seeing them out, and uh, we're excited. We're gonna have one on our event um in may that's happening here nice. in the Ozark. so it'll be cool to kind of see it in action. And uh, if you get one of the one of the uh, Raptor versions, let us know. Uh, <laughs> if you have a cool or unique vehicle, man, we're all about seeing those things in action. But uh, yeah. I'm excited oh, to yeah. see them on the road. I think it's going to be sweet. Good Lord. Yeah, it's it's a lot of truck. I, I'm curious to hear what this thing weighs because we know the existing Bronco, the four-door is, I think they said, it's like 5,100 pounds in the four-door configuration, which isn't light especially for something, you know, where the roof comes off. And I mean, 37 inch KO twos on B left capable wheels are it's, it's going to be a hundred pounds a corner, you know, yeah. like that's a ton of weight plus all the bracing and, you know, beefed up axles. And it, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing's close to 6,000 pounds, which means good God, that suspension better be good. If it's mm. taking impacts from, you know, two feet in the air, three feet in the air. It, I mean, this is their B-roll video. It seems to be doing a good job. Like, 
if, you, they, if it's their b-roll video you would really hope so yeah but like it's it landed fairly firmly in a couple of those little bounces and seemed to ride it right out yeah yeah i mean it, it's it's gonna be a monster we know it's gonna be a monster so i'm even yeah. more excited to see what aftermarket does with something like this yeah. like if, if like a, if there's an rtr version of a bronco raptor like oh, they all all of those houses that and plus it's eco boost right or is it it's a it's a three liter eco boost okay so that's just a tune away from more <laughs> oh oh yeah i mean the question really is for the aftermarket companies like where do you go from here you know you can't really do much better on the suspension front unless you do like you know dual shock remote reservoir systems which i guess if you're spending 70 grand on a bronco you can afford another 15 grand suspension oh i just missed but, the part where they showed the reinforcement that's okay um, <laughs> everybody has google <laughs> They so were, they zoomed in really tight. Yeah, that's Bronco Raptor. I mean, it is what it is. It is yeah. <laughs> Reservations open in the spring, and I think deliveries start at the end of the summer or so. So well, that's cool. They said. Yeah. If they get their assembly line fixed. Yeah. <laughs> Coming yeah. to cars and bids in October for one hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars. <laughs> You, you say that the amount of like TRXs yeah. that have gone across cars and bids, mm. like I think they had like three or four at a time. Uh, and it, I think at one point they had three auctions running concurrently. They had like a red, white, and blue version of TRX and all of them brought in over 90, like just, just not stuff. Not good. Well, there's a, uh, there's a first edition on cars and bids right now. That's up to 79. Uh, that sounds about right. Did you, did you write that? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, the the one here locally sold a first edition sold for mid nineties. Oh man! And it was a Badlands Sasquatch, right? I don't remember the the yeah. exact spec mm-hmm. package. I actually think there have been a number of Broncos that have been listed on Cars and Bits already. Because when so we Ross and I have a mutual friend who bought a bronco and so we were like you should flip that now and place an order for a raptor mm-hmm. and he was like oh, I was just, eh, maybe not but then he has already done some things to it that made it more enjoyable for him so we're not mm-hmm. pressuring yeah. him to yep. list it but uh, how uh i was gonna ask how did the bronco do on the trails for what you guys have seen so far well we haven't had one we we had a guy sign up with one last year and he actually could, he could make it on the event um, but the, the gentleman that bought the one here locally, um, does all of our road rallies and bought that to take on the Overland event. So we're going to have <laughs> one on the event we have in May here in the Ozarks. Okay. Um, cool. so we'll tell you then, or <laughs> you guys can just come and do it and then you can see for yourself. See, I kind of, I like the sound of that better. I so. like plan two sounds great. <laughs> yeah. So the other thing that is happening <clears throat> Literally, as we speak, almost. Yeah, so uh, let the record show that it is 9.22 on Tuesday the 25th, and in eight minutes, the new Toyota Sequoia will be revealed to the world, even though it kind of leaked earlier today on multiple outlets. <laughs> so It was like everybody played the, oh, you, you meant it was 12 hours from now? We thought it was now. So time is hard. We don't understand time zones. PM? No, 9.30 p.m. Oh, shit. <laughs> is that daylight savings or standard? Like, <laughs> so, so as the resident Toyota head, uh, I think it looks great. They took some of the styling <laughs> cues from the Land Cruiser, or actually not the Land Cruiser, more from the LX. I see yeah. a lot of Lexus LX in the yep. taillights. Yep. Um, but the Sequoia, my mother-in-law has a Sequoia. Great utilitarian vehicle, but just mm-hmm. really looked long in the tooth. And I think that design-wise, I think they did a pretty good job de- designing, mm-hmm. you know, all the SUVs look strikingly similar these days. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Toyota did a pretty good job on the redesign. And I'll have to say, like, I like this more than I like a lot of the the GMC products um, for sure in the expedition. And honestly, before compared to the old Sequoia design, I, I preferred the American stuff. And uh, because mm-hmm. we have like a thousand kids, you know, I know <laughs> that we we're going to have a need for a, a bigger vehicle down the road. Yep. And I'm thinking like, this could be a really, 
a really good uh good choice my wife just bought a new car this year but you know mm-hmm. who knows? yeah uh, so I it like does it. i i agree i think it looks great and to echo your uh, your resident Toyota guy thing, uh, Chris and I are both Toyota guys. This is not a Jeep podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, hold up. Well, you own it. You're you got a suburban. But... I, I owned a Jeep a so long time I. ago. You recently owned a Jeep. Yeah, and I'm, I'm back I, in I actually have an 08 Sequoia to go with our 17 suburban. <laughs> like, and the only thing I'm disappointed is now my 08 is going to look old. Yes. Yep. <laughs> because it didn't look old because the brand new ones still look like it unless you knew yeah. like the headlights and the features and things to look for but you knew that was coming so yeah, i knew it was eventually coming but i i do think scott's right like this this looks really good it looks great so it, for the listeners, way better than i thought it was going imagine to imagine the new lx 600 taillights on the back the weird thing is it doesn't look like the back window rolls down doesn't even necessarily look like it pops open because the windshield wiper the I, rear wiper is on the glass uh, so i think it, the glass does open because it looks like there's hinges for just the glass at the top oh yeah okay good. i'm so that's reassuring am but, i sharing it all right now so it looks like an lx 600 rear and it looks like the tundra's uh minor details at the front kind of grafted onto the highlander's grill but they didn't it, it fully works. black out the front bumper like they did on the Tundra. They so it's just like grill. grilled a bumper. They they have actual space. And it's got the Raptor lights and it's got the LEDs at the bottom like the Tundra because it shares a frame with the Tundra. Uh, Falcon Wild Peaks in that picture. And also bright red lower control arms, which, you know, they didn't have enough fun with the, the bright red Fox shocks. So now it's bright red control arms. <laughs> So, and the interior looks like it gets an update as well. I think the thing looks fucking awesome. I've been looking at it all day since I saw this picture and I'm like, oh shit, I just bought a truck. Like, I don't need another truck. This, but this looks so good. Yeah. It, everything about it, it's just so, it's so TRD. Like, that's what I love. It looks yeah. so great. And the freaking interior, did you see the seats? Like the zoomed out <laughs> seats, they look like multicam black. <laughs> oh, do they? That's like the yeah. seats in the new TRD Pro Tundra. It, oh, nice. It's, it, I think it kind of echoes the same design on the inside, but like, you know, we're finally seeing like real direction from TRD mm-hmm. on having like a cohesive, like forward push on this is what we're doing. It's different, but you know, fucking let it ride. Well, and um, freaking updated technology. I mean, like yeah. the size of that screen is enormous. Dude, it's, it's so different from what i have when uh yeah, when I-, I mean my forerunner is an 18 and it's got this like little bitty maybe a six inch screen that yeah. does really nothing ultimately like there's no car play there's no nothing i was just thinking about looking at uh the sequoia today i was just like i wonder if i could retrofit one of those head <laughs> units oh, onto so your forerunner my yeah, uh, that'd be sick <laughs> I had a 2018 Forerunner and my brother bought a 21 Forerunner. And the difference in screens is like, you know, a decade in tech. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. But well, the crazy thing is the 2021 Land Cruiser does not have Apple CarPlay. And it was a uh, Heritage Edition, was like a case of beer shy of $90,000. And it still didn't have it. Yeah. But my yeah. 17 I, Suburban has CarPlay and Android Auto. Yeah, we cannot talk about what they... Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, that blew me away. I did. It did not even occur to me that it didn't have it. So I go to pair my phone. I'm like, wait a minute, where is CarPlay? And it's not. It's like, oh, it just yeah, doesn't right. have it. Right. Okay. I can't remember. I think I so, had a... Ross, there's a reason day. Scott's a little sensitive. <laughs> yeah. That, oh. That's his LCHE. Oh. <laughs> yep. Next to a Bronco. This is a great picture. Thanks, Scott. Like, nailed yeah, it. One of my biggest regrets of, uh, of the last few years is, is not trying to buy a Heritage Editionette sticker because that would have been a good investment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I, uh, I had the opportunity 
and I my distinct I have a great relationship with the uh, one of the Toyota dealerships here. They're one of our Express Rally sponsors for road rallies and overland events. Bought my Super from him, a bunch of cars from him over the years. Just really good relationship with the the general sales manager there, and uh, they got him in. He's like, man, this is the one to buy. Like he he knows me. I'm huge Land Cruiser. Mm-hmm. Um, fan and i told him i don't feel like at 90 grand that's something that i want to that i want to buy um and so here we are a little over a year later i paid more than that for one and uh, luck i got lucky the one that i got literally had 1900 miles on it still had all the plastic on it a guy bought it drove it a little bit stuck it in his collection that was it so mine is essentially new um completely stock which is changing next week nice (laughs) Um, but uh if if you're a land cruiser person you get it and you want one and if you're not it's just a boring big toyota truck Mm -hmm. and i love that i like the fact that it's kind of you know it's stealthy to a degree people don't know what it is and they don't care and like you don't you don't buy that for the attention like it's Oh, I, somebody, somebody said a quote. We, I can't remember who it was, but there was a conversation recently about Sequoia and Land Cruiser owners. And it was oh, like, it's Doug. It was Doug, Doug DeMuro. Oh, yeah. Oh, I shared the image with you. Thank you. Yeah. Doug basically said like. Sequoia, you know, Sequoia. Uh, Sequoia owners say, why would you spend so much money on that? And Land Cruisers don't know that Sequoias exist. Yeah. yeah. Land Cruiser owners don't look at Sequoias. <laughs> <laughs> The great and my favorite part is Doug felt bad about saying it. I'm sure he, he regrets sure. saying it. I was like, Doug, it's true, it's fine, like it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it's the you know, like there is no higher peak than Land Cruiser, in especially in our little world. Is it yeah. this is the first time I think we've had four people on the show who all own Toyotas, but. Like Land Cruisers, the all of them multiple Toyotas. Okay, let's go around. <laughs> Hi, my name's Ross, and I have a Toyota problem. You <laughs> have a forerunner issue. I have a four. Well, that escalated four, four, to a GX issue. Yeah, I'm on my fourth <laughs> forerunner based vehicle. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's great. It's great. Wow. Chris is trying to count. I have, I have to count. Sorry. <laughs> What about you guys? What's your uh, what's your vehicular history been like? I'm at oh, five. Yeah. Five? five. Scott's is atrocious. <laughs> I can't. Uh, uh, mine's start, too long. I'll tell you. Started you what, off with I, investment banking, so of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ouch. I'll tell you, it's it's literally too long to go into. Um, I'll tell you what I have now. So I have a 1975 FJ40. Um, I have a 1992 80 series that was purpose built for our uh overland events it's a 1hdt turbo diesel swap um long range america fuel tank like it's it's stupid build you know but that's what i wanted um and then i have the the heritage edition the 200 series um i have a 957 porsche cayenne gts which is sold getting sold friday Uh, i had to get rid of that when i bought the heritage um those Cayenne GTSs have, are really cool dude it, and it looks it's awesome. It's awesome it looks fantastic uh, somebody in the yeah. apartment complex that i used to live in had one of those with stick and it was the fucking coolest thing ever yeah they were like probably 90 years old they're, they're <laughs> uh and then i i have a porsche 911 uh street cup it's a bbi street cup build uh that i've taken our road rally events hmm. uh, so that's that's it. I've had Supras and other Land Cruisers and other stuff over the years, um, but that's 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 it for now. I, I have a sickness, and that sickness is Land Cruisers and Porsches, and I like I don't. <laughs> I, I don't. It's real. It. So one will oh, work yeah. forever, and the other one just costs you a lot when you got to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> Porsches don't break, man. Like this, they they that's are what no. We've heard. Them. Um, and they're 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 wonderful. But so, uh, if you ever decide to change your Heritage Edition <laughs> wheels, 
I want them. There we go. <laughs> because we go. <laughs> I wanted to make the lamest joke ever and turn the Sequoia into a Heritage Edition clone. Because <laughs> so, it's the same size wheel. It's a standard 18-inch yeah, yeah. wheel, same bolt pattern. Yeah. And then I was going to make little decals. It said Toyota and put the Sequoia in the script, like on the Heritage Edition side. Let the record be the dumbest joke, but it was going to cost me like $5,000 to go joke, find those wheels. <laughs> this joke went so deep last year that it was to the point because you know that you need a, a heritage edition VIN allocation to get those wheels from BBS. Chris yeah. was looking into actually pretending to have somebody's VIN. I, I had a VIN. It wasn't you my truck, that. but I had a VIN. Oh. <laughs> I just didn't have five grand yeah. for a joke. <laughs> the stupid thing is you get those awesome wheels with it and your spare is not that wheel. It's, it's the not... traditional Land Cruiser. I'm like, are you? It's so steel. now... If I ever put a bumper on that thing and I want to get a you know spare wheel back there, uh, you're gonna and it's gonna bother me too much to not have a matching spare. So yeah. you have to go and buy one. I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what? I think I don't need a bumper on that. I think I'm good just <laughs> kind of doing some mild, mild mods <laughs> right, to make right. it, you know, better for better for our events. Um, but like the 80 is what is gonna be on most of the events anyway. So it's fine. It, it's fine it's yeah okay come on. so i'm gonna have everybody note that he said no rear bumper and then he invited me to take the 200 series out to death valley and moab because we weren't sure if the 400 is going to be done 200 still coming i'm just gonna say that bumpers <laughs> probably won't make it back <laughs> please no <laughs> no J jason harris from ozark overland outfit field uh ozark Overland Outfitters. Sorry, I can't talk. Dude, it's a sponsor. Uh, you better get that right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's he does the work on my vehicles and Aaron's consequently as well. But um, he was pushing me. He's like, man, you know, I think I can fit this thing in and get some stuff to done to it before we go out to Death Valley and oh boy. Moab. And what started out with um, just really minor stuff has now morphed into – we're going to have the suspension almost done, armor, sliders, roof rack, drawer system, <laughs> other little miscellaneous stuff. Um, and then uh, found out today that Dobbinson's is going to step up and do the suspension system on it. So we'll have MR, MRAs on that thing later in the year. But hats this off to Jason for like, he has a full plate getting my 80 done aaron's four under done which by the way we need to spend significant time talking about that i'm not going to take crap from aaron on spending too much money on the cars when he's spending more <laughs> than some people have in the driveway oh. um so we have that to discuss but hats off to jason for like somehow managing to get all of these express rally vehicles trail ready by the event um so it's it's going to be fun but but anyway that that's enough we need <laughs> we can uh is that your 80 driving away? Yeah, that okay. was the uh, Jason sent me that video. Um, I've got a different set of wheels that's going on if they haven't arrived yet. Um, but yeah, that's her. Very excited her to get truck. that thing. Coming. So I'm very nostalgic right now. What's the uh, what's the story <laughs> with this Forerunner? Uh, ah, yeah. before uh, we before we start on this Forerunner. My, the only question yeah. I wrote in the show notes for his forerunner was like, does it just have all of the tire meat? Like, could you not? <laughs> like, it's so much tire. <laughs> so not all of the tire meat. I didn't go oh, full shit. 40s on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> chonkers, <laughs> man. Some chonkers. Good so God. It's, oh. it's only 38. Um, <laughs> only. Ross was talking about 100 <laughs> So uh, these are 38-inch Milestar Patagonias. Um, they're a 38 by 13 and a half, 17. Um, so they're they're beefy, um, <laughs> but they're also proportional to the rest of the build. Okay. Um, so months and months and months ago, I ordered Barlin Crawler's RCLT HD uh, IFS kit. Ooh, um, that's reasonably new, isn't it? Yeah. So it uh, it finally released. So it's been years in the making, right? Um, yeah, been they've been doing crap tons long. of R&D and it just kept getting pushed back year after year. It was ridiculous the way that Barlin Crawler tags people along. Um, it finally released in February and I missed the first order. <laughs> um, super pissed about it. 
so second wave opens up in March and I placed the order in March. Uh, it was due to ship between and, and arrive between June and July. And uh, it did not show up until December. Oh my. So uh, 70, say $7,400 later, it, oh it showed up in December. Um, uh, my RCV axles um, are RCV 2.75 inch uh, long travel Dana 60 axles. Um, so they're, they're beef. Um, it's got a 200 series Land Cruiser steering rack in there, um, which I mean, it needed it. Like the last trip that we had, so New Mexico and, uh, and Colorado back in August, September, um, my wife and my daughter and I, uh, drove down to New Mexico a couple of days ahead of time just to have some us time in Red River and, uh, went out and did a couple of trails and, uh, something didn't feel right. Ended up taking an emergency trip down to Albuquerque, um, at like six o'clock. So it was a three hour drive. So we got there around nine, um, to show up at the Toyota dealership right across from our hotel, uh, the next morning before they opened the bay doors. And, <laughs> I think I was like one of maybe 15 vehicles stacked up to go into three door bay. No um, and I roll in and they're like, Hey, uh, what's your name? And, uh, I give them my name and they're like, uh, you're not on our list. I was like, yeah, we called in. We talked to the service manager last night. They said they were going to get us work in. And there's like, dude, I'm supposed to see 200 vehicles today. Oh there's no God. way. And I was like, no, this has to happen. This, th I need this to happen. Um, ended up breaking, uh, my power steering rack, uh, in New Mexico and had to get that replaced with like less than 24 hours before, uh, they kick off our New Mexico event. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's needed a new steering rack. Um, I replaced it in August with a brand new OEM forerunner one. And when I had a 200 series Land Cruiser steering rack sitting in my garage. So oh. imagine how that felt spending uh, $2,000 on Toyota parts when you already had the parts. Oh, Heartbreaker. no. Chris, your home, your family again. Again? <laughs> yeah. So does the, the kids, does the 200 rack bolt right up or is there like moving? Uh, minor mods. Um, so the 200 steering rack uh, actually goes push forward two inches. Um, which is what allows you to gain your up and down travel. So between that and then the Dana uh, 60 RCVs, um, it's got a lot of strength built in there. Um, but there's literally like very, very minor modifications to where the steering rack needs to sit. Um, uh, and then like a couple of weld points and that's it. Um, so it's, it's pretty simple um, modification for any skilled mechanic um, to jump in and do noted for future reference yeah it's totally it's one of those things that once once the cat got out of the bag about uh, marlin crawler's marac they said ultimately they were going to build their own like they were going to fabricate their own steering rack system um and the cost was just too significant um and so they identified that the uh, land cruiser 200 series rack would work just as well um and then they kind of beefed up those tie rod ends uh, to make it really, really, really stout. So, uh, yeah, I mean that between that and a few, few spare Toyota parts that needed to go with Marlin crawler, like it was maybe, uh, it was nine, 900 and some change. Um, so it wasn't bad for, for that to be able to beef it up. And it, like I said, the cat's out of the bag. So all the guys that are going to larger than 35 inch tires on the four hundred platforms are going with the, the 200 mm -hmm. series steering rack. Right. And now's when we're going to start seeing it because, it's been out long enough that people aren't going to feel as bad chopping them up. Yeah. You know, we didn't really see like fourth gens on 35s or, you know, the, the 10 of them out there that are on 37s until the fifth gen had been out for a while. And now that mm -hmm. we're starting to get to the tail end of the fifth gen, it's uh, it's time for some sawzall yeah. and, and some oh, man. moving yeah, but things. Between the, between Marlin crawlers, uh, Marlin Crawler's RCLT system and uh, these guys that are doing these nasty SASs, it's getting crazy out there. So you kind of got to do something a little drastic to stand out amongst all the other <laughs> freaking fifth gens in the wild. Right. So for the novice, SAS solid axle swap? Yes. Yeah. Woo! That was more for the listeners. I knew exactly what we were talking about. 
<laughs> well, I mean, it, I think the next step, the next step is absolutely what RSG uh, did, RSG Metalworks, when they built their their uh, Forerunner out. Have y'all seen that? Uh, I don't know. Like, I've seen that one. So RSG Metalworks, uh, based out of Colorado, they built out a fifth gen. Um, I think it's sitting on 42s right now. They did an SAS Christ. on it. And oh uh, they called out Toyota last year uh, by putting the Tundra's 5.7 liter V8 engine in it. Oh, yes. So they swapped the engine out and it's, it's absolutely insane. That's what the fifth gens needed since yeah. day one. Fourth or fifth <laughs> yeah. gen? Fifth. That's a good motor for the, mm. for the fifth gen. If, if the fifth gen had gotten the five, seven, I would have bought another one. But alas, here we are. Yeah. So speaking of power, uh, holy just... crap, Ross! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it makes mine look like a baby. Like, good fucking god! <laughs> that that's some work. Yeah. That's our 2021 recap. But like, holy crap! They started the video with that thing just ripping tires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. What gearing is on there, though? You know, to do that. Uh, give me a little bit see what i can find or is it like 97 psi in the rear tires <laughs> i don't remember what uh what gearing they ended up doing i'll say for for mine i switched out my rear axle i went to a diamond axle nine and a half inch um to put 529s in look at the Five ground clearance okay. <laughs> That's yeah bad. it's just stupid yeah, thanks if, Jesus. if you had told me it was on portal axles, I'd be like, okay, because it's sitting yeah. high enough up to look <laughs> like it is. You know, that's what's going to be the next crazy round of shit at SEMA is going to be like the first dose of affordable portals. Uh, I know a guy here in town who has Volvo portal axles under his 80 series. Mr. Holloway is a mad genius. This is the first time you've mentioned that, and we're going to need more information. Yeah, I want you to bring that up. Uh, Get him on the show. Shit. He's not he's not like a person, like he's just a guy who builds cool Toyota shit. <laughs> he, he doesn't have anything to promote. Like he just he made the hour of Kelly's time. Like <laughs> uh just to just to circle back talking about powers, uh Sequoia official numbers are out. So it has the same engine as the Tundra. It's a, they call it a 3.5. It's really like a 3.4. Uh, twin turbo V6, 437 horsepower, 580, 80, let's try again, 583 pound feet of torque for the hybrid version. And two and a half inch Fox shocks, 33 inch Falcon Wild Peaks. That's, uh, that's the goods. 9,000 pound towing capacity. That's really good. That is 4,000 pounds more. Than my premier edition suburban, <laughs> four thousand pounds more than a fifth gen forerunner, and eight hundred pounds less than a Grand Wagoneer, which I have parked outside right now and takes up almost all of my driveway. You have an East Coast driveway. That's not saying East much. Coast driveway. Yes. <laughs> so, what what we're coming to is, we all like the Sequoia. We all want to drive it. Yeah. Just let us have it like why are we why are we taking so long with these reveals like can we just that video is nice though that they dropped on the toyota usa instagram page oh, that's a that good one. that's some good b-roll did not see uh they like literally four minutes ago they just dropped it it's, it's happening now <laughs> chris you're pulling that up okay <laughs> so yeah I'm, I'm getting there this is a good looking rig i, I gotta say i mean it looks Whatever. like they've got captain chairs for the rear seats too. Yep. Oh, so just that's, like my normal one. Everybody's doing that now. That's the move. The third row slides forward and backward. That is something I have not seen before. I'm a fan. So, and and Scott, I'll just kind of give you a tip here. The Sequoia is great until your 10 year old society wants to be a catcher and his baseball bag becomes the size of airport luggage. <laughs> um and then the sequoia is not great because that bag does not really fit well behind the third row when you also have to take a stroller yeah for roof racks for right yeah just to go across town for baseball like bags going four yeah. times yeah. a year going like you're fine which my, my neighbors across the street i bought a bigger vehicle they bought one of those hitch baskets and i was like i feel like they made the better choice like <laughs> 
Much cheaper, Joyce. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, said the suburban has been great for us. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to drive this thing. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. I did. I did send one of the uh, shots earlier to my wife, and she was like, "Yeah, how much?" I was like, "You don't want to <laughs> that one." <laughs> uh, probably sixty-seven. So what I'm taking next time? Guess next time. What I'm going to do is I'll send her the Land Cruiser Heritage Edition. And say this one's ninety. <laughs> This one's the more reasonable price. That's a smart play. <laughs> That's the smart play. Oh, Sorry, Scott. Man. It, it, you know what's really interesting? I'm looking at pictures on Autoblog. It looks like it has a built-in shelf-type system for overlanding, like for putting your so you know your inflatable mattress or sleeping bag right on top with the third and second rows folded. So it's like a platform. It, it it's basically just because the the forerunner, the fifth or the fourth gen forerunner had that weird little shelf thing that could go up, so you could divide the cargo area. Yeah, and mm. this is just a straight shelf. The folded second row probably so it's folded, on auto block. Yeah, probably folded. You know, over the batteries. I think the batteries for the hybrid are under the second row seats, but the shelf, the way it's situated here, makes it look like it's basically just them doing what you know goose gear and all those guys are doing to give you a place to sleep it's pretty it's kind of kind of good it's kind of cool i like it my, yeah. my internet is slowing welcome to the toyota sequoia podcast i'm who who knew that oh damn come on i got a rainbow wheel hold on <laughs> is that one of the optional wheel packages the, the rainbow Toyota wheel Sequoia, it's on it's wheel. on my computer can you oh that would be such a funny get like a funny bit if you painted your wheels the mac spinning <laughs> pinwheel that would be good and oh, so as you so rolled fun. through parking lots it always looked like you were constantly loading because <laughs> oh, it'd be like be... dad look at the beach ball that would be so fucking funny if i ever get a set of winter wheels from gx i will do that that would be so good so yeah so this this picture is what i was talking about rainbows and blizzax (laughs) that actually like that's nice so interesting with my second gen which goes from 2008 to 20 now 21 22 22 because this is a 23 my the edge of my trunk space is actually a lid like there's a compartment there and so when the third row folds down the level of the third row folded down and that compartment match up Mm -hmm. and then there is when the captain's chairs fold flat there's a piece that then goes that bridges the gap from the captain's chair to the third row Mm -hmm. and so i get the same kind of thing as this but it looks like they just eliminated the compartment where i had ice scraper toe strap air compressor stuff stored in that compartment there in the trunk so i'm sure this is someone did a study and this is actually more usable functional space where mine and is it's just, adjustable up and down if you see the notches above yeah, and below yeah. it this is the first we're seeing of this this is pretty clever you know it's kind of like what ford did with the maverick where you can put the four by eight like slot into the different uh, heights on the bed yeah yeah i will be curious to see what they do with the modifications for that third row like seat deletes and stuff for that because that i mean that's a solid what four inches probably at least least. yeah it's it's a drop but is that bridge under that third row axle and suspension area or is that batteries um Tundra hybrid batteries were towards mm-hmm. the rear, so that's probably similar that similar placement. They I don't know that they would spend a bunch of time redesigning completely different wires to run to the back. They probably have similar link stuff. Interesting. Okay, here's we speculation. Spent, per, yeah, we, we've spent <laughs> enough time on, on the Sequoia. Let's uh, let's move on and talk about some actual things that you can actually do now in the real world. Very soon, based on when this podcast soon. comes yeah, out. Yeah, very soon. So. Want to just, dive into the goods, the Overland let, Rally? No, let, let's start with Express Rally because that's where all of this starts, okay. correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you just want brief history? 
Sure. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do Instagram videos while you talk. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, YouTube doesn't good. care if we post those. Yeah. We had <laughs> our Western Express and Colorado videos come out recently. So it's good to look at. Um, uh, Express Rally was founded in 2015. Uh, I founded it because myself and kind of a small group of friends wanted to do something a little more structured with our cars, um, track days and kind of nice hotels and good driving routes and all that stuff. Um, so kind of what we developed a following for since 2015 was high-end car rallies for exotics and sports cars. Um, and over the years that just kind of grew and we added more people kind of to our express rally family. Um, and it got to a point where we do events all across the country, the Pacific Northwest on the West coast and the Midwest and the South. Uh, next year we're adding uh, the East coast to our, to our lineup. Um, so that's kind of, you know, that's primarily what we're known for. Uh, in 2018, we added what was called adventure series events, which kind of took the same concept that Express Rally Events is about, which is really just to bring together people who really like to drive. Um, it is not designed or meant to be a smaller version of Gold Rush or Bull Run or any of that. I am not interested at all in nightlife. I'm not interested <laughs> at all in uh, people that have money and buy cars with that money. I'm interested in people that buy cars and some of them have money and some of them are every normal people. I have, you know, Subaru WRXs and S 2000s and Supras and Lamborghinis and Ferraris and Porsches and everything. Um, our slogan is drivers only because we are unapologetically focused on the driving experience. If you want a rally where you're uh, trying to figure out the best brunch spot, that's not us. We're going to get up early and we're going to drive. Um, we do track days. You know, it, it's if you're going to show up to my starting gear with two Rolexes on so everyone knows how much money you have, no one gives a shit. <laughs> like, just don't, don't come. If you like driving and you like people who just genuinely love cars and and being behind the wheel and kind of sharing those experiences, then the events are for you. It is a absolutely wonderful group of people. We've gone all over the place together over the last six years, and I mean, it is you won't find a better group of people. Um, when, from the exotics all the way to the to the more entry level stuff. So. Um, the cool thing is at the end of the day, you know, you're going to go have dinner or have a drink or just kind of hang out with people that they just like driving and, uh, it's very genuine. And so that's, that's kind of the, uh, the background on the road rally stuff. The adventure series events, uh, in 2018 started, um, like I said, to kind of take that same concept and kind of take that off road. So in the beginning we did just kind of really easy trails and we went to an off-road park we kind of gave people the option of uh, you know if we want to stay at a hotel we plan a hotel um to kind of just be a really good introduction to off-roading and that's actually how Aaron got involved he actually did our our very first adventure series event and then um he and I just kind of developed a, a friendship after that and then what transpired over the next year was Aaron wanting to kind of become more involved as this was something that he and his wife were uh, wanting to invest a lot more of their time and, and um, experience in. And so really we transitioned from those events um, to purely overland events under Aaron's leadership. And so uh, there's Express Rally, which I own, and then there's actually a separate entity that Aaron and I are partners in. Um, and the Overland stuff is really, it's really Aaron's brainchild. Like we kind of, we uh, come up with places to go and work on that stuff together. And we kind of each have our responsibilities within that. But um, Aaron is really the brains behind a lot of the route planning and, and the logistics and a lot of the specific things behind the overland events. Um, and I'll, I very distinctly remember 
be sitting on my back porch having a phone call with Aaron and one other guy talking about, okay, if we want to do overland events, like how in the world do we create something that's unique enough that we can charge a price where we are profitable, but also develop an experience that's up to the standard that our events have, which is, you know, it's really high, to be honest. Like I take that really seriously and I know Aaron does too. So we charge what we charge for a reason, but that just means it's incumbent on us to really deliver. So that's how Express Rally broadly, and then, you know, kind of zero now on the Overland events, which is, I know what we want to talk about, but um, I'll let Aaron talk a little bit about his perspective on it and then kind of how the events have sort of evolved and changed to where we are now. Um, take it away, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> Like Scott said, in 2018, uh, we saw an ad on Facebook. I think I think it's like one of the sponsored ad or something, or maybe somebody just posted it um, about the first adventure series run um, from Northwest Arkansas down to Hot Springs. Um, and uh, my wife and I had just acquired our Forerunner. Um, we actually traded in her Prius so I could get the Forerunner. Um, because I wanted a forerunner really bad. Um, and it was time for the Prius to go. Um, we'd had that thing, uh, I think since she graduated high school. And so we'd had it for quite a while. Um, it was time to get a bigger vehicle. Uh, we had three huge dogs at the time. Um, and so we were like, we, we can't fit all of the dogs in one vehicle. So we need to get something that we can get all of them in. Uh, we didn't have a kid yet. Um, or no, we did. I lied. We totally did. <laughs> I like how you looked over your shoulder and just said that. Well, she's uh, been there at times during yeah. the show. So he that's yeah. how you know he's a good husband. He's making sure. Make <laughs> sure I don't get shot by help. the Nerf gun in a second. Slap um, on the back of the head. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so the 2018, that, that run, um, that was kind of our taste of, like, do we want to do more with the vehicle? Because it was completely stock. Um, uh, and we went out and hit the off-road park on day two. Um, and I will never forget getting stuck on the very first fucking trail that we did in the hot springs off-road park with Scott, uh, and uh, a few other guys. And, um, we had this really great trail leader, uh, and this very capable two-door Jeep. Um, and then we had a not so capable Subaru. Uh, I think it was either an Outback or a Forester. I can't remember. Um, but it was brand spanking new, um, like brand spanking new. And it just, it did not like the terrain that we were on at all. And so we were stuck on that trail for over four hours. Oh my gosh. Um, oh. Yeah, it was, it was pretty gnarly. <laughs> and so through that time, like, uh, we got, I got to talk to Scott a little bit. Um, uh, and, uh, even though like we were stuck on that trail for so freaking long, my wife and I were having a damn blast. And I mean, it was hot as balls outside. Like it was August in Arkansas. It's so freaking hot. <laughs> um, like we kept looking at our, our temperature gauge on the car, like shit, is our car going to overheat? Like we need the AC blasting cause it's so stinking hot. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it was just such a good freaking time. And immediately after that, um, we decided we were going to start, uh, modifying the forerunner and seeing like where, where do we want to go first and this was a great way to do it scott kind of guided me through that like and how do i decide what do i do first you know um and that event was really that kind of precipice for us to to make those decisions and then afterwards i mean you you get the bug right like then you're doing all of the things immediately yep. um making very poor financial decisions um and uh, <laughs> are you I wish I didn't have my headphones are on so my wife could hear. <laughs> <laughs> and so then, like, that justification became I think that we could do more with this event. Um, uh, and so I started spending a shit ton of time in the Ozarks after that. Um, uh, and I would take just day trips, I would drive up with one of my dogs, and we would just go bomb the shit out of as many trails as we could get done in a day. Um, and, uh, and then I think maybe like January or February, uh, Scott and I had a call, um, uh, they were expecting their twins at that point, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, mm -hmm. and I just had, let's see, I just upgraded my suspension, um, <laughs> and tires and I picked up Scott from uh, the hospital in Little Rock, um, where his wife was in the hospital. Uh, and, uh, they were thinking that babies were about to come. Um, and Scott needed to get up to Fayetteville to go get, uh, his vehicle. Um, and, uh, we drove up and actually did a photo shoot of 
my vehicle when it was still white and Scott's 80 series before anything was really done to it other than like having an icon suspension system on it. And so both of our stuff had icon on it. So we did some, we did a, a video shoot and sent, sent that over to icon for some media content. Um, and it was snowing in Arkansas, like that never happens. Um, and it was just, it was, it was a cool time. I think that was the first time, like, I felt like I, I, like, I connected with Scott and was like, I wonder if we could actually do something more than like just what this first event was. Um, and so I asked him like, how can I help? What can I do? Um, uh, and that was kind of where I, I helped support the second adventure series event that was from Northwest Arkansas to hot springs again. Um, and I mean, we had, imagine having a group of 50 vehicles that you're managing drive. And I mean, this was like a bloody, I swear to God, it was like a seven or eight hour trip because you're driving all these freaking back roads that take forever to drive on. Um, it was a lot, it was a lot of people. It was so many people. Um, but it was a blast, man. And, uh, not, not anybody's complaining about anything. Like it was just a fantastic time. Um, so yeah. prior to this, before 2018 ish era where this devolved had either of you had extensive off-road experience or this was like your first foray and you just kind of fell in love with it scott you had some background in it right yeah i've i've done land cruiser toyota i mean i've i've done stuff for a long time but not um i've done camping a lot of mountain biking Mm -hmm. and done a lot of toyota four-wheel drive stuff but just like not called it over landing um, yeah, put a label on it and, and it was on it was years ago um so it wasn't like i was doing anything up until then my, my wife enjoys spending time outdoors um and we did a lot of that before our twins were born so you know it was it was kind of a natural progression to marry those things and to go forward um so i had some experience in it um I think Aaron. Uh, Good none. I yeah. like I. I love being outdoors and I love camping. Um, uh, and uh, like I grew up in Scouts. Um, and so like I I was outside a lot as a kid. Um, we used to do like monthly camping trips and stuff like that, but never anything like this. Um, and I think that that was the thing that after after that first event and getting a taste for like what the Ozarks had to offer. I, my mind like was just blown away. I was like, holy hell, this is in our back. And uh, if I've grown up here and I've never seen anything like this before in my life, like that just, it reminds me like how lucky I am because so many people have no idea what's here because they don't have a vehicle they can go out and experience it. And so that's really what kind of developed the, like that, that thought of like, we should do these overland events because it, it's intimidating right but i'm one of those people that i love to go out on my own even though it's extremely reckless um uh, to go and do some of the stuff that that i've do not done uh, <laughs> yeah i do not condone it i don't recommend trying this at home um uh, but that's why we developed these events to get you out in your vehicle and see what you may enjoy um uh, and see this landscape that you've probably never encountered may have never encountered if you were if you were reluctant to do it on your own um, and you get to do it surrounded by a bunch of really cool people that have a love for vehicles, have a love for the drive, have a love for being outdoors and getting away from all of our freaking technology that absorbs our lives. Um, uh, and uh, it's just, it's continued to grow. Um, we've taken tons of feedback from the events around things that people really love um, and uh, things that I would like to see personally different. And so every event is a little bit different. Like we twist it a little bit more. Um, our original events, like, I mean, it was balls to the wall. We were traveling like 280 miles over the course of two days what? Um, uh, and Holy almost shit. all trail. And it's, that's a lot, that's, right? Yeah. That's a, <laughs> it's, it's so a much. Trash, that's a fuck ton. Yeah. It's, we do that it's on the quads sh- and it's, you know, it kills you, but still, <laughs> it's, in a truck, it's a lot. You I mean, you're, flying. you're going really fast and like you're, you're flying through water crossings and you're, I mean, you're obliterating some vehicles and it's, it's a blast, but it's exhausting. And so um, this year, these last few events, I've kind of slowed it down a little bit so we can enjoy more of the scenery. Um, And uh, the results of that have been absolutely like, it's been very, very welcomed. And we've had some people that have repeated for every single event. 
Um, we've had some people that have joined us for one, um, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll save up money for like our bigger trips out West. Um, uh, and so that's been the cool thing is like seeing the people that come back, but also the people that invite others to come with them again for another trip. Um, and so we get to see that family grow, uh, every event that we do. Quality, so quality. great. <laughs> I've done that before. Yeah. <laughs> Stop an air filter out. Cause <laughs> Yeah, Jesus. Oh, been there. It's so good. So what? Uh, what's in the cards for the future? What's coming this spring, later yeah. this this calendar year, winter? We got a lot in the works. Um, so uh, I guess from the time of the the release of this podcast, we'll be a week away from Death Valley, um, where we'll be meeting a group of people in Alabama Hell's area, uh, and then making our way est, uh, east, east, est east um uh, from there we'll east is best yes <laughs> east um we we'll make our way east through death valley national park okay. um uh, we're gonna go up hit the racetrack um tea kettle junction we'll head around uh hunter mountain and then out to a more a little bit of a gnarlier day on echo canyon pass <laughs> um and then we'll head up to titus canyon which i'm super stoked about because some of the things that i've really enjoyed about being out of town is that while the terrain may not always be like super, super intimidating or tons of obstacles, um, the views are just, they're so damn good. Um, and so that's the thing that I've had to remind myself, like be, from the beginning of our Overland Ozarks events, where it's like, like I said, balls to the wall, you're just hauling ass to see all the crazy cool sights to see. Um, and this is one of those places where like, we're going to have to cover a crap ton of miles to do it. Um, but the terrain's not nearly as, uh, difficult is what you would experience in some of our our you know backyard area of the Ozarks or Mark Twain National Forest things aren't as tight you're not having to worry about a crap ton of pinstripes um uh, like you do here but I mean you have these epic views in Titus Canyon that are just absolutely gorgeous um, I've got a I've got a buddy of mine that um he's spent the last I want to say almost three years getting to travel and just do whatever the hell he wants um, and he'll stop for a little bit and, and do some work where he needs to, to make up some more funds, um, in his FJ. Um, and, uh, and then I'll go back out and do some more. Amazing. Um, and, uh, he'll post his pictures and I'm like, dude, where's that at? I have to go see it. Um, uh, and so he's, he's kind of like my hidden, hidden gem of scouts. Um, when I can't always take the time off, um, I'll just scroll through his freaking Instagram feed and be like, where's this one at? I want to go do it. <laughs> Dude, race, racetrack is 100% on the list of places I want to go to. Like, it's yeah, just yeah, it looks crazy. It looks eerie. Yeah, it looks creepy as shit. Like, rocks are moving, but no one's, no footsteps. Right? Like, <laughs> it's so cool. Oh, I feel like we've, we've talked about racetrack before, I think, but that was with um, Dan Edmonds, and they were, that's where they had all those rigs that blew shots. Not, nope, not all those rigs. Justin's coma. <laughs> and that I thought that. Was it a Frontier or a Titan? I thought the Titan, Titan did too. Technically. The Ridgeline didn't and everything else yeah, did. I, I don't think the trip. Titan technically blew a shock. It had issues though. It had issues. It didn't make the whole trip. It was 28 miles of washboard, he said. Yeah. The washboard's going to be pretty brutal. Um, uh, and this is really where those, where you get to get a good feeling for your shocks. Like, did I spend enough money on my oh suspension my system? Mm -hmm um uh, how I, much money will i have to spend at the chiropractor after this trip <laughs> yeah it's true some. it's totally true i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure icon spent some time out there with their new cdev valve uh Ooh. technology i saw that i saw the uh the clay and rochelle had a bunch of that yeah. stuff that they were using on that on the new the alaska trip, on the new alaska trip. Yeah. yeah yeah it looks pretty good so after Death Valley, um, we are making our way. We've got like a, a two-day lapse between Death Valley and then we're making our way up to Moab. Um, uh, and uh, we're going to start out in Lockhart Basin. Um, we're actually going to do it in reverse. I know a lot of people go north to south, but we're going to go run it south to north. So we'll end in, in Moab on day two. And then we're going to end our trip at Top of the World, um, which will be, cool. a, I mean, super, super sick ending to an event. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so I'm stoked about that one. And then let's see. Oh, top of the world's one that the giant outcrop. Yeah. Probably the most famous off-roading picture yeah. point. 
Yeah, that there it's is. gonna be great. Maybe short of like Black Bear Pass, right? Which they just did. Which yeah, there you <laughs> well, go. You Which you did in the rain. In the, it was so <laughs> sketchy. Oh no no no! It oh was not only God. raining; it was sleeting, and there was hail too. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> so the temperature like plummeted on the way up to the top of Black Bear, and then when we freaking got to the most difficult place on the steps, it starts dropping pellets on my damn windshield. And like you want to talk about shaking in your boots, that makes you shake in your boots. Yes. Um, especially when you see this huge Jeep on 37 inch tires sliding down the shelf instead of actually rolling across it. Christ. You're like, oh shit, they've got uh. solid axles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have solid axles. <laughs> I don't have solid axles. Yeah, Chris had this video play before, and I was just watching tires drag, not, not roll, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, drag. just exactly. But they're not hopping. We're just going wee. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. yeah. It's so scary. Black Bear. Black Bear was absolutely one of those amazing places, um, and uh, I've got my fingers crossed for a very, very special, uh, special thing with Black Bear this coming Colorado trip. Um, uh, but we'll wait to share that until we get approval from the United States Forestry Service because uh, it will be a little bit different. Um, <laughs> Keep us so, in the loop. Sounds yeah, exciting. It's going to be, I'm man, I'm beside myself. It's what the way that I've always wanted to do Black Bear Pass, so it's going to be sick. The, um, well, the crazy part about the section we just watched is that Gladiator, like Gladiators don't seem that long to me, but like dude, having to do three-point turns on Black Bear is not a, fun. <laughs> That doesn't no. look like a three-point turn in a gladiator. That's a no. It looked like that's an turn. Austin Powers turn. Yeah, yeah, that was. <laughs> yeah, he just he kind of dropped off the shelf there. <laughs> um, yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, you see his hand shaking. Um, so let's see. Three months, three months from Moab, we're gonna uh, head back to the Ozarks um, to our, our homeschooled stopping grounds, um, and then fast forward four months from there, we're gonna be back in New Mexico. Um, and then, like, literally the next week, we'll be in Colorado, um, back in the Array Telluride area. And then two months after that, we will be in Tennessee. Cool. Yeah. So, so we've got we have, we've got a packed year. We know people. Yeah, in we Tennessee. currently have currently Moab and Death Valley are open for registration, even though when this podcast airs, they will be happening the following week. But um, pack your bags. Yeah, if anyone is listening. Uh, and they want to join in on those events. Um, if they have not filled up, which typically our events sell out like six months to a year in advance as soon as we open them. Uh, we, we did have a couple teams that backed out of this one. So if people want to go and you have the ability <laughs> to jump in last minute on an event like this, you can register. Go to expressrally.com. We've created a coupon code for listeners, which is the coupon code is just O T R A. And that will save you 300 bucks on the, the entry, which is like 30, 30%. Um, so that's just, you know, something we want to do for people that are listening, realizing that, you know, it's, it's happening literally next week. So um, <laughs> maybe difficult to do, but it's not impossible for some people. So if you want to do that, um, you can certainly do that. Uh, and then beyond that, um, our Ozarks event is currently open for registration. Uh, I want to say we have like five spots left in that one and we, we limit them to 15 to 20 vehicles. Um, a group so, of 50 didn't work well. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's a different type of event when you're dealing right. with camping, uh, and yeah. food and all that stuff, it's totally different. Uh, which we should we should probably touch on well, how the events are actually structured. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we have we have that one, and then registration for New Mexico and Colorado and Tennessee will be or will be opening um, shortly after uh, the Death Valley and Moab events conclude. And then after we kind of get through telling you about what our events are, and uh, we will share another event that we have coming that's going to open a little bit later this year or early next year um that's going to blow your mind uh so we'll talk about that too but um i have a before you tell me later i have a guess i won't ruin it now i'll I'll wait until (laughs) did you listen to the other podcast i didn't i just (laughs) i feel like i have a fun guess okay so 
so let's go through the events themselves. Give us the lay of the yeah. land here. Yeah, so um, our events are designed to be a completely inclusive experience. So uh, what that means is the route planning, the food, media coverage is all provided. It, it's all done ahead of time. You literally pay and you show up and that is all. You enjoy the weekend. I love this. Uh, it's great. <laughs> and so our events are are fairly expensive, but that's because we do things the right way. What I mean by that is it's not me taking pictures. We have a legitimate media crew. <laughs> um, you can look at any of our Instagram, social media, whatever, our videos, the photos we put out that we're they're professionals. We, we, we happen to know the guys really well and they're some of my very best friends, but you know, uh, we pay them and they're not cheap. They do a phenomenal job covering these events for us. Um, beyond that, we provide chef prepared meals, you know, for dinner and for, yeah, there they are. Black elf media. Uh, <laughs> I love this thing. That van is nuts. Chef prepared meals for breakfast and lunch. Again, it's not me and Aaron grilling out hamburgers. <laughs> like, it's legitimate good food, steak, salmon, chicken, fajita. I mean, it's, it's great food. Um, and then, you know, the other element is the route planning. So Aaron spends a ton of time on the routes, making sure that we're hitting the stuff that you want to hit. You know, it's, the pace is reasonable. You're really getting, uh, you know, you're, you're getting to enjoy the areas we're in, but, but you're also getting to, um, kind of test your vehicle a little bit. And we designed the events to be doable if you have a stock forerunner or a stock Jeep. We do recommend, you know, at minimum 33 inch all-terrain or mud terrain tires. We recommend sliders depending on the event. Obviously doing something in the Ozarks is different than doing something in Moab. So it's just it's kind of depends on the event. Um, but, you know, we, we did not set out to create an event that was affordable. We saw we our goal was to create the very best event we could within kind of, you know, within reason. And so uh, the other component that I think people don't realize is whenever you do events like this, uh, like we can't just do it and then have people sign up and pay us and that's it. It uh <laughs> You have to get permits for the media crew. You have to get permits to use a drone. You have to get permits to just be able to have a group of vehicles in this area. And that deals with the National Forest Service, the Bureau of Land Management. You've got to have appropriate insurance. It is not cheap to do any of that. Those are not three, $400 items. Those are thousands of dollars that it costs to do that, to do it the right way. Um, and we've had people that are like, you know, why in the world would I spend a thousand dollars or 600 bucks to do this with you when I can go out and do it with my friends for free? It's like, well, you've got to look at the time aspect of it and the convenience aspect of it. So if you're doing this, you know, several weekends a month and you know what you're doing and you can plan a route, you can do all that. I completely understand. Um, but we do have a ton of people that do our events. And they spend a ton of time in the forest or out doing this on their own. And they like doing it with us because for that one weekend, they can completely think about enjoying where they are and what they're doing and spending time with their family or with, you know, whoever they brought with them. Uh, so it's just a different approach to it. And um, I'll let Aaron talk a bit more about it. I've, I've ran my mouth enough on it, but uh, we always – we get a lot of pushback on the pricing. And then after people do the events, we never hear about pricing again. They're like, this was incredible. I will sign up for every one of them. Um, so I mean, people yeah. always, you know, totally neglect the fact that if you go on a vacation and pay a tour guide, like that's, it's not cheap. It, it never will be. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, a, not just a generic tour guide showing you like the most popular things that there are. This is like tailored to a hobby, to mm -hmm. a specific niche of a hobby, you know, and, and it's cultivated. Yeah. 
You're absolutely right. And there's like Scott said, like the amount of legwork that goes in on the front of this stuff. Uh, it, it's a lot. There's so many hours every single week that's spent with back and forth between uh, the BLM or the National Park Service or the U.S. Forest Service. Um, there's timelines that have to be met. If you don't meet those deadlines, like the event's not going to happen. Um, uh, and every one of those uh, services is different. Like BLM and uh, the National Park Service, they don't want to hear from you until at least four months close to the event. Um, if it's before that, they're not going to even talk to you. Um, uh, whereas United States Forestry Service, if you're planning on going to Colorado, man, you better do that at least a half year in advance um, because they have so many requests to do stuff. Um, uh, New Mexico, nobody goes to New Mexico. So it doesn't matter how soon you talk to them, um, which is sad because New Mexico is fucking glorious. Like it's absolutely one of my favorite places in this country. Um, it looks uh, like it. <laughs> and, and it doesn't get enough credit where it's due, but um, yeah, it's one of those things that I've come to find, like there's so much red tape doing this stuff. Um, uh, every, every office is different, you know, like dealing between these two events that we've got coming up. Um, Death Valley has been uh, really, really easy going, easy to work with, um, uh, and not a lot of red tape to jump through. Whereas dealing with Moab, um, uh, we were originally planning on going through like At Arches National Park. Um, uh, and that national park does not allow um, any type of guided tours uh, because they issue, issue two year contracts to like four, three or four um, groups in the Moab area. Um, and so you would have to subcontract them to be able to just drive through that area with a group, um, which is just, it's, it's crazy. And like, I, I had a really long conversation with them a couple of weeks ago and it was great. It's very, very informative, but it just sucks that like, then you have to botch your entire route, um, and then rebuild it, you know? Um, and I, I really do my hardest to not have to double back on stuff stuff like I want I want to be able to connect everything in a very streamlined way um so we're not wasting gas because gas is precious in a four-wheel drive vehicle yeah. right <laughs> yeah. um, yes. uh, ain't that the truth <laughs> can't imagine yeah in, in a certain uh forerunner in question but yeah it is yeah. precious <laughs> yeah I, I have no idea what's what my gas mileage is about to do but that's that's why I put an auxiliary tank on it so I'm gonna have 46 gallons on it nice. holy crap that's more than the Suburban that's yeah it's uh yeah it's a lot um uh, it's not nearly as much as scott's though because he's got his stock tank and addi an additional what 40, LRI 40 something gallons 40 yeah it's it's 40 yeah so <laughs> so you've got 60 60 something gallons total right 69 uh 60 was it a 25 in the 80 i don't remember I thought it was a 24 count. I've got Google. I want to say I 24. Look. I want to say 66. 66. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's excessive. It's fucking gas. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's close to a thousand, thousand miles of range. Holy yeah. cow. And that's I diesel mean, that's, now. Yeah. And that's diesel. <laughs> yeah. So those are things that like, we absolutely have to take into account. Um, you know, we've got, uh, we got one client that we're talking to for the Ozarks event in May. Um, and I had actually reached out to Rivian a couple of years ago when Rivian first started getting on the scene about like, Hey, y'all test all your shit out in the West where it's dry as fuck. Um, how about you come out to the Ozarks where we've got uh, water crossings galore and you can toss a rock and you'll hit one. Um, uh, bring that bad boy out here and let's test it out. Um, and they said, not yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm stoked because we've got a customer that is waiting on their R1T right now. Okay. Nice. Um, and so we're crossing our fingers that this guy is going to get his R1T in time because I'm really eager to test this guy out because I've heard they're awesome. extremely capable. Um, we had also, yeah, we had Johnny Lieberman on the show talking about the R1T and that trip they did, you know, the trans trail. trail. Yeah. It, it fucking did the job. Yeah. They're, they're phenomenal vehicles uh, from everything I've heard. I just can't wait to see one in person. Um, right. But the trick in the Ozarks Same. is there's only <laughs> one place near the Ozarks to charge your vehicle. Um, uh, and it is 
way on the other ass end of where we normally uh, uh -oh. do our rallies. So I'm trying to figure that part out logistically. <laughs> Just, like, uh, how do we make that work? Drag um, it on the 80 on regen. Yeah, on, <laughs> that that is a thing. Uh, we no, had they did that with the TRX. <laughs> Yeah, well, Johnny did it, and then Emmy Emmy Hall and Rebecca Donaghy yes. when they raced in the Rebel Rally, right. they figured out that if they could flat tow it, they could they added like seven miles range. It wasn't it wasn't massive, but like they added range, like that was the thing. Yeah, right. I forgot about that. But yeah, they were out Impressive. in like uh, Glamis, I think, where they were doing that. So that's way out in the dunes in California. So yeah. So you mentioned an upcoming trip that's special in a way can we uh can you we want my guess details? yeah what's the guess i think it's iceland oh fuck oh uh, dude <laughs> not yet <laughs> not yet okay <laughs> that is way up scott mentioned it earlier and ross and i both had trips to iceland killed due to the pandemic so oh, it's still it's still uh, in the back of my brain i was so. gonna guess dalton highway that's not a yet. great destination we we have plans of doing pacific northwest okay and then probably before or the, the problem with Alaska is it's just, man, the time. It's so far away. So far. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a week of travel time. Yeah. Um, I'll let Aaron cheer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, Scott and I have been working with a really great partner. Um, his name is Frank uh, with Land Cruiser Heaven. Um, and we are going to be hosting a 12-day international excursion um in colombia oh, oh my gosh shit. yeah so uh this is gonna be the plan is right now is all things all things go well um uh, well depending on like all the other shit show of pandemic crap that's happening right now um as long as everything goes according to plan 2023 we'll be we'll be pushing off and heading to colombia for a 12-day excursion so it'll oh, be all inclusive shit. um uh, it'll it'll cover the cost of shipping your vehicle um uh, all all the food four-star hotels um for a couple of nights to give a little bit of a break to get your stink away um uh, but i mean we're gonna be hitting i mean the fucking jungle like it's gonna be yeah. insane um it's gonna be so cool i like my wife and i keep talking about like is this one of those trips that uh it's sketchy as fuck so like we don't take the kid or right, yeah. <laughs> one of those trips it's like this is the trip of a lifetime right what other eight-year-old will be able to say that they've traveled and camped and overlanded in a jungle and a, a mm -hmm. third world country like you know it's it's one of those things so i'm leaning towards like yes let's absolutely do it um <laughs> uh so uh also like yeah. eight might be better at like 13 <laughs> Like, I don't know. Like, See, 13 is like that age where they don't want anything to do with you. So Yeah, but like they're they're almost self-sufficient, which would help like <laughs> and, and could maybe like lend a hand. Like eight-year-olds are kind of useless. Yeah. Well, so I will say, I will say to to my daughter's point is that she's gotten to do this quite a bit over the last sure, few years sure. with me. Um, and, uh, she is very self-sufficient. Um, uh, she's extremely creative and loves to be outdoors. Um, awesome. mm -hmm. if, if nothing else, she will find a shovel and she will dig wolf pits to trap the, the wolves that are native to the area that we are always camping in. Perfect. Um, uh, so <laughs> yeah. But so, you're always camping. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. You've been all over the country. Terrifying. You know, wolf pits <laughs> everywhere. They're imaginary. Come yeah. on guys. I so, got it. I got it. I literally gave her something to do. I love it. Exos, uh, South America video series today, mm -hmm. and they start yeah. in Colombia. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that is freaking awesome, and I, I mean, I that's can't a, imagine. That's I still feel like that's so an good. episode that the Grand Tour didn't do right. They wanted to make dumb jokes the whole time, and they like, you're in freaking Colombia. Yeah. Just yeah. shut up for yeah. five minutes. Give each other a hard time later. You don't have to do any bits. Show us Colombia. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful. And this is this is going to be awesome because like our our media team like they're already answering right now to to start working on it um, because of all the pre work that's going to have to go with this logistically like we're we're planning on storyboarding this um, yeah. and it's going to be a series it's going to be <laughs> I mean it's going to be absolutely amazing, amazing. <laughs> yeah I, I I could fly a drone so good <laughs> uh, we'll have fifteen I think we'll have fifteen rigs oh um, wow it 
it will be expensive, but I will say this. I think it will be on par with just about any family vacation that you could yeah. take. Um, so it's not, you know, I think if you're serious about it, it's one of those experiences that you'll never forget as long as you live. Uh, and that group of people that goes and shares this experience together, I think will always kind of have that that yeah. bond and that memory together. Mm-hmm. So it'll definitely be something cool. And, you know, uh, for all of the talk of adventure out there, like you can't see any Overland post without the word adventure in it at least <laughs> nine times. <laughs> Um, I only put it in one hashtag. Come on. <laughs> this is a fucking adventure. Yeah, that's, seriously. That's some shit. You go into rigs and coffee, not an adventure. No. I, um, I can't stand car shows, actually. <laughs> car and coffee is fucking so, terrible. <laughs> you said you're working with... Cars is great, but I uh, just in general... <laughs> oh, I can't stand you it. You said you're working with the Frank at Land Cruiser Heaven. Mm-hmm. Yep. Does does he have local ties down there? Yeah. yeah. So Frank okay. has a shop in Virginia. He also has a shop in uh, the UAE, and he has a shop in Colombia. So he's going to be really facilitating a lot of the, um, a lot of the event, and he's done in a very similar event before for for some customers. Um, so, so he sounds like have, he'd be a good friend of Kurt Williams. <laughs> yes, I have. Uh, I have a good relationship with him over because of just some anchors or stuff over the years but yeah aaron and and i have had some really good calls with him about planning it all out and uh we we've got to jump on another call with him uh <laughs> here in the next couple of weeks uh to continue that conversation but um it, it's going to be a lot of fun and and for the type of things that we do you know i hope that we're continuing to build a base of people that are, are going to seriously consider investing that time and that money to have a, to have an experience unlike anything else. Dude, it's, it sounds it's amazing. It's going to be unbelievable. Um, and we will keep you guys up to date as, as that kind of unfolds and, and happens. Um, yeah, man, if nothing else, we'll share all the, all the shit. That sounds rad as hell. Yeah. Is it well, sad that I just Googled what language they speak in Colombia? Because I was like, man, I have some <laughs> Spanish. Is it because I know like Brazil's Portuguese? Like I didn't I didn't know if it was something yeah. else. Like, no, it's Spanish. We're good. Yeah. Well, uh I think um uh, that'll be fun to share those details. And I, I can only imagine the feedback from people, you know. <laughs> I, I think price why it's gonna be between six and seven grand per vehicle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but that includes shipping. It includes all the stuff Aaron mentioned. So it's like you're you're getting a lot, and it's almost two weeks, right? Um, right. Which is cheap know, for like a family, you know, go to Florida. far away two week vacation these days, dude. If I, uh, my brain's thinking of so many details already. Like you got to get your rig to Houston, and then everybody goes on the same boat, or is it going to be? So depending on where the vehicles come, you're looking at Galveston for the port. Okay. Um, and other options depending on where they are um but other things to consider when you're shipping shipping a vehicle takes two weeks to get it there two weeks to get it back yep um you've got to pack it in a way that is allowable uh if you have a lien on your vehicle you don't technically own it so Mm -hmm. you're gonna have to get permission from whoever you finance it through to allow you to ship it to another country crazy Uh, that's crazy people don't normally think about uh and then you know a lot of the other stuff on the back end medical stuff and things that things that aaron really does a good job with kind of making sure we have a good playbook and uh for our normal events but it's just all amplified at a new level um Mm -hmm. but you know i as far as the events in general uh that's that's far away and we'll, we'll have plenty of time to hash out those things but um you know we would love to get you guys on an event so you can kind of see and get a first firsthand experience for what it's like and then also your listeners i know you guys have have a probably a pretty eclectic mixture of people that listen to this and some of them are undoubtedly are the the (laughs) diyers like i'm not paying i'm not paying those nutsack 600 bucks to drive the forest okay then don't yep Uh, dude i can 100 percent think of like three Um, dudes already that are like i don't want to navigate i'll pay them (laughs) <laughs> it's yeah. just like navigating is my least favorite part of everything having to do with 
yeah automobiles <laughs> yeah and and you know we we want to at least let people know there's an option out there if you're just getting owned getting into overlanding or you're still relatively new and you want to meet some other people or you just want to experience it in a different way we have a little bit of everything and for for some people who have the luxury or the privilege of getting out and doing this you know several times a month it is nice occasionally to just be able to pay someone and not have to deal with any of that stuff along the way. so even if it's not the cooking like i mean shit and the cleanup like who yeah. likes to clean dishes in in the middle of the woods no I one don't Fair point no one I, ever my my cheapest hack ever is i buy the jimmy dean bowls so all I had to do is do a little nonstick spray in the pan and pour the bowl in and heat it up for breakfast. Like I don't, nice. I, I, that way I don't have to carry eggs. I don't have to carry cheese. I just on the bowl. It's in the cooler. We're good to go. Like, yep. yep. The Get kids can do it on. even like so easy. Yeah, fine. <laughs> so easy. Cool. This guy who can't cook can do it. Well, Chris, we, for, we, we got to get both of you guys down for sure. Hell yeah. For the Ozark event. Okay. Um, we need to make that happen. Uh, that'd be a good one for you guys to experience first. And the, the good news is, I think this means I have to lift the Sequoia. So do it. I thought you were lifting the Suburban. Uh, I I might care about that one too much, considering we use that every day, all the time. I'm starting to think about places that these guys have described, and <laughs> the longer wheelbase being an issue. Uh, um, I mean, I've gotten I've gotten a raptor through the Ozarks. Um, so, and, and I mean that one, like that one, I was undoubtedly like absolutely not. Um, uh, and uh, we beat the hell out of that thing, and it it survived. Um, and it drove home. Um, we beat the hell out of it. <laughs> yeah, we beat the hell out of it, and it, it like I said, it survived. Um, yep. It's a raptor. Uh, and the guy, the guy that drives it is not easy on it at all. No, um, he, he beats the living hell out of that thing all the time, just for fun. Like if, it, if he's in a parking lot, he's going to jump a curb or something just for yeah, exactly. Because he can. Just um, because he can. Yeah. Yeah. Just because he can. Of course. I, mean, I, may have, did, I may have done that with a the, Honda CRV in like the late nineties, just because <laughs> I thought I could. Like I, sorry, dad. Uh, <laughs> My bad. <laughs> truth comes out we're good (laughs) oh man so you guys should uh you should plan like a northwood of maine's trip that would be a fun new experience too for you yeah we have 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 some new some new areas but it's you know Mm -hmm. a lot of it is figuring out where we want to go what we want to do you know a lot of them aaron likes to take the time to go up and actually spend some time there and do that that takes time and, and resources and everything else uh we've had a couple where we've we've just ended up knowing knowing some people that you know really knew the lay of the land and so they were able to kind of help develop a route and put some things together so it's not always the case um but really what we're bound by now is just the amount of time that we can spend doing it you know i, I have a full-time job um aaron has a full-time job we you know express rally is a hobby it's it's for fun it's not yeah. what i do full time and i don't want to do it full time <laughs> um it's just a lot of fun yeah you know, keep it that way and um you know i i think aaron aaron's in the same boat but the overland stuff is, is a little bit unique and it's different and um i think as we've seen the demand grow it's kind of opened our eyes to we can we can replicate and do this in new areas and i'm sure i'm sure we will find people that want to do it we can um on we were on another podcast last week and um i i went into a little bit on sharing some of the fun uh comparisons between the attitudes of people on the road rally events and the attitudes of people on overland events and it shocked me like you would think that people who drive exotic sports cars are are pretentious and look down on people who don't have something of that value or of that caliber and interestingly enough what i have found is most of the car guys are really cool to each other the overland community is not what i would have expected 
<laughs> and it's, it's kind of inverse because <laughs> what you have is people who uh, DIY everything or they look at something and what it costs and think that someone who pays that is a complete fucking moron. <laughs> and that was really interesting to me. And while I think people who, you know, build stuff and all, I think that's cool. I think it's neat that people can engineer and figure that out and do it. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. But like the, the dynamic of people who look at someone who purchased a $4,000 rooftop tent or who purchased Max Tracks or who purchased Rotopax, um, they, like, they look down on them for spending that money. Because in their mind, you could have built it yourself for cheaper, or there's a you can go buy something at Walmart that does the same thing. Like they approach it from that. Yeah. And it's funny to me because it's so subjective. Like exactly. Without sounding like a complete asshole, honestly, to some people, $30 is a lot of money. And to other mm-hmm. people, three grand, they don't give a shit about. <laughs> Yeah, that's lunch for some people, unfortunately. Both people can go out and enjoy themselves to the exact same degree. Yep. Yeah. And that's true. I don't think someone who's out there in a $90,000 Bronco should feel like they're better than the person out there in a, you know, an old $90. (laughs) But I also don't feel built everything on their rig should look at someone who has an eye camper or rota packs and think they're an idiot idiot it's like no right maybe they just don't want to spend the time to build it they or would have rather the time Ex- exactly hey that's dude i'm bringing the lexus is going in this weekend for the the build and i'm having a shop do it because i don't, yeah. I don't have time you know yeah so it doesn't mean yeah. that i'm like you won't enjoy lesser. it less you'll yeah. still enjoy it yeah, exactly yeah. just because you didn't put the shocks and springs under it right. and cut the bumper and all that fun stuff i'll say one more thing on it and i'll shut up but it was i had a, i had a, it was a positive interaction with someone on one of the land cruiser pages um where they were talking about an 80 series repair bill that was like 900 bucks and it was like that's why you learn to work on your own rig so you don't ever, ever have to pay anyone to do that and i challenged them i was like well one you don't know the context of the situation so you reach a point in life where the, the time is worth more than the money. Now, I understand that there are some people who they're never going to pay someone 900 bucks to do anything. They would, they would die before they allow that to happen. But you should approach it more that it is subjective. Everyone is a little different. And for that person... Maybe they didn't want to spend the three or four hours that it would take to diagnose and fix that problem in their driveway. Maybe they decided they didn't want to spend the time to do that because they were going to spend time with their kids or their wife, or they had Mm -hmm. something else going on business-wise that if they did, they could make enough to pay for that or more. And it's like, you just can't look at it. It's just not that simple. Right. Never know every piece of the puzzle. Yeah. At the end of the day, you love being outdoors in your rig. I like being outdoors in my rig, and that's the end of it. <laughs> and some people want to do it full time, and like they have a quest that you know I'm gonna live in my vehicle and not have a full time job and do that. And that's cool if you're able to do that. That's what you want to do. Right on. I think that zero fucking interest in that. <laughs> <laughs> Get away from my from my job and stress. A couple times a year and yeah. completely decompress mm-hmm. with Aaron or with my friends and other stuff like like that's what I want and you know everyone's different so yeah. it's like mm-hmm. it's just hysterical to me that the overland community was so so much more difficult to kind of get in with than guys that are driving quarter million dollar sports cars it's like seriously like mm-hmm. <laughs> be more welcoming to people right yeah. <laughs> Well, the, the next time we have you guys on, I want to talk about Ozark International Raceway too, because I haven't been down there yet. So it's awesome. I, re- I drove Road America last fall, but I haven't been down to Ozark yet. It is a very fast track and it's a very dangerous track. That's what it, it looked like. Sounds fun. 
It's awesome. <laughs> so, all right. I need to, uh, you need East to wrap Co- things up Yep. because East Coast time and school has started for the semester. So Ooh, you didn't have to get a master's. That's what I'm saying. I didn't, but it, what are you getting your master's in? Business, MBA. Business. <laughs> what is that face, Scott? <laughs> Business is good. <laughs> it's okay. It's it's, it's fine. So <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like there's a story here. <laughs> oh no, I mean, I, nope. I just <laughs> I I have no desire to study anything ever again. <laughs> oh, I way. didn't either. I, <laughs> I, I have. I've already quit a master's degree. I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, Eric, no, the- what would you guys like to plug? Um, I'll say uh, expressrally.com. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. That's where we share all of our, all of our um, events. We do have a private group for people that uh, have participated in our events before or just very interested and it's just express rally and then dash drivers only okay. if you apply i will approve you or aaron will approve you and we'll let you and we post events there before they go live um we we try to really announce everything there and then you can see it on instagram or facebook as soon as they open up um we do have an email list that we keep and send send uh, information out on the events as well but the social media is the easiest place to get to us um I know you can you can follow Aaron on Instagram at Yoda Runner Yoda dot Runner, <laughs> uh, and he'll you know he he gets out and does it a lot more app a lot more often than I do. Um, so as far as staying current with a lot of the events, he's probably uh, better to follow and also just follow his build. His forerunner is pretty cool, and I know uh, beyond the suspension stuff, I think we're gonna have some some cool changes hopefully to the appearance of that coming soon so it'll be good to follow along with uh follow along with that as that kind of takes shape um and then my personal one too i have a variety of stuff out there from Land Cruiser stuff and porsche stuff and porsche yeah yeah don't forget that. yeah um but that's it aaron anything else you can think of oh you covered it yeah and we'll have a new event fairly soon so stay tuned for that really probably in march we'll open open uh new mexico colorado and and uh, maybe tennessee so yeah. new mexico has me very interested <laughs> it's gonna be a good time because it's just as far away for me as colorado is just a little farther south like the the yeah. time of the drive is the same but then i'm not surrounded by people in colorado i'm in new mexico rub it in dude. yeah rub it in. yeah start driving you can be here in three days uh <laughs> Well, sweet. I'll wrap it up. Uh, you can rate and review this show on iTunes. I still every time stutter and ask if people still have iTunes. It's Apple Podcast now, right? Uh, yep. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. There was a video. This is probably a good episode to watch. There were a lot of visuals that we didn't really yes. talk about. Sorry, audio <laughs> listeners. Um, and then Scott already did it. So it's at Express Rally on IG. And then Scott is at Express Rally Scott. Aaron's Yoda.runner. That's Y O D A. Not Yota as in Toyota, but Yoda as in Star Wars. Uh, you can read what we read on the Hooniverse, the real Hooniverse on Instagram, Hooniverse on Twitter, UTV driver, ATV rider, everyday driver, and maybe another publication. I might be talking to people. We'll see. Uh, Ross is at No Not Like the One from Friends, and I'm at Overlanding Dad, which is literally in the last three weeks, I've started to regret that Instagram tag. Like, I. My, my definition of overlanding is like international travel. So like the Columbia trip, like you're crossing borders, sure. you're doing stuff. That's overlanding to me. Like if there's not an international border involved, you're car camping. Like <laughs> our camping dad has a very different ring to it. Exactly. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> we'll stick with overlanding just because it's out there. And I've said it on a hundred plus shows now. So yep. <laughs> down yeah, by the river, does. my man. Exactly. exactly. Which that river, was all bourbon. Is that the mean? Because all of us are Toyota fans. Yeah. You don't like Toyotas, you can get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, oh, I gotta go yeah, pull the Jeep out like somewhere. Seeing, you like seeing everything, uh, but it was <laughs> nice to talk with some other Toyota guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, good time. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah.